Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Globus Spirits Limited Q2 FI22 Earnings Conference Call. Joining us on this call today are Mr. Shekhar Swaroop, Joint Managing Director, Mr. Paramjeet Gill, CEO, Consumer Division, Mr. Bhaskar Roy, COO, and Mr. Nilanjan Sarkar, VP Finance. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an in I'm sorry, as a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchtone telephone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shekhar Swaroop. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Hi, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Q2 FY22 earnings call. Um, the second quarter gone by witnessed a strong rebound from the first quarter that was impacted by lockdowns arising from the second wave. Uh, happy to inform that economic activity has recovered to pre-COVID levels. In fact, in some areas, it has grown uh, to pre-COVID levels in the areas that we operate. Uh, before we jump into performance, uh, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that reported financials for Q2, FY22, and H1, FY22 include the effects of the merger of Unibev Limited with Global Spirits Limited. And accordingly, the financials for previous comparative periods have also been restated to ensure like-to-like -like comparison. At Global Spirits, our consistent focus remains on growing both arms of our two-pronged business model to continue to help us to grow from strength to strength, namely the consumer and the manufacturing businesses. We are happy to report that both our businesses continue to grow on the back of improved capability building in our consumer business and strong demand for ENA and ethanol backed with high plant productivity in our manufacturing business. Our efforts in creating better offerings to the consumer uh, in, in, the seg in the relevant segments, along with strengthening capability at back ends and front lines, is playing out to our advantage. And we remain hopeful of translating this into further market share gains in the coming years. Further, the hourglass shape market that I have spoken about in the previous calls continue to guide our strategy in key markets. Uh, further details on this will follow in Param's remarks. Uh, coming to the manufacturing segment, while demand for ENA and ethanol remains strong, our business performance suffered due to plant closures to some extent. In Bihar, the facility has been closed since 15th of August this year due to flooding caused by unprecedented rains in the region. Whereas we were able to take precautionary measures to preserve our assets, the opportunity cost of this closure is estimated at about 20 crores for the quarter gone by. We expect the plant to restart in December and achieve um, uh, our uh, targeted productivity uh, uh, budgets shortly after. In addition, planned shutdown for critical maintenance at Haryana and West Bengal further led to an estimated contribution loss of about rupees five crores. Despite lower capacity utilization due to planned closures, the manufacturing business posted a revenue growth of 7% year on year, driven by robust overall uh, growth in overall realizations. With respect to our, uh, uh, our plant expansion, uh, the work continues to remain on track. The new facility in West Bengal with a capacity of 140 KL per day is expected to be operational within November of uh, this year, so uh, in this month, and is likely to operate at full capacity from quarter four FY22. This marks a record completion of work in about 14 months, despite three to four months of disruption due to lockdowns and heavy monsoons um, in, this, in this period. Work in the Jharkhand factory is underway, and we expect the plant to be fully operational in Q1 FY23. In Odisha, land acquisition is underway, and we believe it will be completed by end of December of this year. The company has also received 10-year long-term volume allocation 
for our units at Haryana, Jharkhand, West Bengal, and Odisha by the OMCs for ethanol supply. Um, this is a welcome step uh, to assure volume of take for our facilities. I now request uh, Param to take you through the performance of the consumer business. Thanks, Shikhar. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope. Uh, Mr. Gill, uh, this is the yeah. operator. I'm sorry, uh, we cannot hear you clearly, sir. Hello, is it better? Yes, sir, it's better now. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope you had a good Diwali. As Shekhar explained, our consumer business has seen strong traction with growth in volumes by over 13% year on year and 12% quarter on quarter, while revenue grew in the range of circa 30% year on year, as well as around 16% quarter on quarter. And we are well on our path of a strong growth trajectory for the forthcoming quarters as well. Further, we are very happy to inform you that the product mix continues to improve with a higher share coming through the premiumization from the value segment. Let me take you through a quick analysis and strategy for this segment. For our value and value plus segments, the key markets of Rajasthan, Haryana, and West Bengal continue to show growth. In Rajasthan, our market share has increased to above 32% on the back of strong performance of the value plus segment, where our market share increased to almost 45% in Q2 of the current year. This was in the range of about 29% in the last year. Further new launches have been planned, that is Black Lace Rum and Global's Green Whiskey brand in the coming quarter. We are also expanding our whiskey and vodka offerings via Tetra Packs. Tetra Pack, as you know, is an interesting modern offering which not only is efficiently transportable due to the weight of the glass bottle no longer being a factor, but is the most pilfer-proof packaging around in the consumer business. It also offers advantages to the traveling mobile consumer. This move also establishes our ability to move forward and try and capture modern trends in consumer behavior in these relevant segments. In Haryana, we've maintained the market share in the range of 9% and are planning on launching two new brands in this quarter to further accelerate our path to gain market share. The new offerings which have been planned will again play in the plus segment and have the ability to shore up our margins basis performance. Both offerings are in the whiskey flavor, which is the most dominant flavor in that market, and will be entering the market with considerable packaging upgrades as well as liquid. In West Bengal, there is a huge headroom for growth since our current market share is only about 2%. Our upcoming expansion at West Bengal facility is about to give us an added impetus to not only expand our portfolio of offerings, but will also allow us to capture sudden market surges in that geography. We have reintroduced our original Goldie brand in the market, and this is initial feedback. I can say that it has been well accepted. New launches are expected in this quarter, not only in the plus segment, but we also plan to expand our offering by including a rum. We've successfully started energizing our current portfolio across the chain by not only improving its overall delivery to the consumer, but also expanding as well as upgrading the range of our offerings to cater to the evolving tastes and preferences of the consumer. We are also taking into account the seasonal as well as occasion-led changes in the consumer behavior to capture these opportunities. Global Spirits will continue to participate as a meaningful business in the premium and core segment, given the potential in the industry and the economical benefits that accrue to the players in the segment. In the IMFL business, as earlier mentioned that in the post-COVID scenario and basis, our philosophy or 
playing where we have a right to win depending on ease of entry cost of doing business contribution profile business environment etc we are about to go in for local production of our brands in west bengal this will allow us both to expand efficiently into the total state of west bengal uh, which as of now is being serviced in the greater calcutta area entering key markets of delhi up haryana over the q3 q4 period through in house sourcing is almost around the corner and is going to be a very exciting phase in our journey we have increased our offering as well in the imfl segment to also include participation in the semi premium segment in our portfolio to help accelerate our progress these through these markets we are hoping to contribute significantly to the semi premium and premium segments uh, where these markets play a significantly salient role i'm looking forward to a very exciting journey ahead with the support of all the stakeholders i request dr roy to now lead the conversation thank you sir good evening everyone let me now take you through the operational and financial performance of the company we are happy to report that our higher margin consumer business has seen an increase in share of the total revenue the contribution of the consumer business has increased from 42% in q2 fy21 to 47% in q2 fy22 on the back of robust growth in volumes and realizations led mainly by value plus segment also known as medium return in the consumer segment we have seen a strong growth not only in revenues but also the contribution of the consumer segment to the overall business in q2 fy22 revenues from consumer business in q2 fy22 came in at rupees 181 crores and growth of 30% year on year and 16% quarter to quarter the manufacturing business on the other hand while growing has seen its contribution come down from 58% in q2 fy21 to 53% of in q2 fy22 in the manufacturing segment our bulk alcohol revenue came in at rupees 138 crore for the second quarter of fy22 quarter fy22 saw plant closures which already was mentioned by mr shekhar sarugli uh, giving details despite this the capacity utilization came in at 90% in q2 fy22 in terms of volume the consumer segment saw sales of 3.80 million cases a growth of 13% year on year and 12% quarter to quarter of which value plus stood at 1.30 million cases a growth of 63% year on year and 19% quarter on quarter our cash flow generation in fy21 was strong and we generated rupees 148 crore of net cash flow from operations whereas for half year fy22 the cash flow generation was 138 crores our finance costs are reduced by 37% year on year from 9.9 crores in half year 21 to rupees 6.3 crores in the h1 fy22 on the back of reduced bad debt as mentioned above and reduced the average cost of debt to 7.4% h1 fy22 our interest cost for the quarter Uh, last quarter is 5.95% on long term loan as a result of the improvement in the financial risk profile of the company marked by healthy operations margins and comfortable capital structure and debt coverage indicators the credit rating for our long term and short term bank facilities stand reaffirmed that care is stable with enhanced credit limits as of january 21 we saw our ebitda margins improved by almost Or one to the PS year on year to 23.3 percent in quarter two FY22 and remained within expected range. However, quarter two FY22 saw fuel inflation of 20-25 percent, which was offset to the to some extent by upward moving ENA prices and AFS prices. Whereas EBITDA margins for FY22 expanded by 60 to 50 to 25 percent from 18.4 percent in FY21 half year. on the back of higher share of consumer revenue and improved realizations as mentioned in the previous call we continue to avail the map credit avail to the company on account of the benefit of setting up plant and older section of the income tax 
that reduces the effective cash payout of tax to around 24.83% in half year. Till such time this credit is fully utilized, the company's cash outflow will be in this region and we are expecting that uh, this, year, this year we will end with a tax expected current year of cash outflow of 21.33%. Now coming to the working capital, the MAT credit which, is, which will be fully utilized this year and from next year, there will be no income tax max rates should be available. Our rate should be in the range of 24 to 25%. Now, coming to the working capital cycle, overall working capital cycle has seen an improvement. However, there is an increase in accounts receivable and account of strong growth in higher price of consumer value segment, of which the duty paid is funded by the company. The NWC days is 11 days as of now. Despite this increase in working capital, our return ratios have significant expansion. ROE and ROCE have gone up from single digit FY19 to 31% and 39% in FY22 respectively. We have calibrated our operations to ensure that any disruptions are not only temporary, but can also resume quickly as a result. We believe we are in a strong position. This concludes my reports on the operation and financial highlights. I would now request the moderator to open the forum for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on the attached own telephone. If your questions have been answered and you wish to take it, if you wish to withdraw yourself from the queue, you may enter star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. While the question queue is uh, building up, I just want to highlight two points that were raised in uh, Dr. Roy's uh, comments. One is that uh, our effective tax rate, whereas you read as 33%, um, is due to uh, 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 the availability of MAT credit that we have available. Um, our effective cash payout is, around, is only around 18%. Um, from next year uh, onwards, so after 1st of April 2022, our effective tax rate will come down to 25%, which is currently 33%. The cash payout will increase from 18 to 25, but effective tax rate will come down from 33 to 25. Therefore, there will be a significant impact, positive impact on uh, EPS. Uh, the second thing is that uh, you would have noticed our excise duty uh, uh, share has been increasing uh, this quarter uh, faster than our revenue. And that's essentially due to the product profile uh, changing, our revenue uh, mix changing uh, in favor of higher value uh, consumer products. So operator, uh, if, the, if the question queue is ready, we can uh, begin with questions. Sure, sir. We have the first question from the line of Kostuk Kavaskar from Sher Khan by BNP Parima. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good, good afternoon, sir. Thanks for giving me the opportunity and congrats for a uh, good set of uh, numbers. Uh, sir, I have three, three broader, broader questions. First, on your consumer business, if you could help me with the growth in your key markets such as Rajasthan, Haryana, West Bengal, how was the growth in this quarter? Uh, right, uh, Param, could you please? Yeah, yeah. So if we if we look at uh, Rajasthan, Rajasthan is a strong double digit growth uh, over fifteen percent. Haryana is a single digit growth, close to about seven odd percent. Delhi, of course, is a extremely high growth in four hundred and eighty odd percent, and West Bengal is very marginal growth as of now in the range of two to three percent. Oh, okay. Okay. And so uh, this quarter, we have seen uh, the revenue contribution from consumer business uh, to uh, have uh, gone up to uh, 47% uh, and uh, the uh, manufacturing uh, contribution has come down. But this can be attributed also to the uh, factory shutdown which happened in Bihar and Haryana. And maybe from next quarter, uh, the mix would again uh, uh, change. Uh, is it a right understanding? Yeah, so uh, uh, one needs to do that calculation. We frankly haven't done that. Uh, there has been increase in uh, consumer revenue, obviously, 
uh, and also re reduction in capacity utilization. So, uh, you know, both things have helped increasing the consumer growth, uh, the, the share of consumer uh, in revenue. Um, we, I also mentioned that the Bengal factory, the new capacity is starting this quarter. Uh, plus, uh, Bihar will resume operations. So there will be significant growth in manufacturing revenue, obviously. Right, sir. Uh, and so in West Bengal, since we are uh, focusing on, uh, you know, uh, on our own, uh, uh, since our own capacity is coming up and uh, uh, the production will start to... So currently we have a market share of around 2%. So uh, what, what is your target? Like, uh, you know, once the distribution increases beyond uh, Kolkata, uh, what kind of share you are expecting in West Bengal? So, uh, you know, in, from a strategic point of view, we'd like to have greater than 25% uh, market share in every state. Um, uh, uh, West Bengal uh, poses the greatest opportunity for us in terms of volume. It's a similar size market as uh, Rajasthan. Uh, it's conducive to business with the changes and policies that um, uh, that have been announced and to be implemented in a matter of weeks. Uh, uh, you know, it's difficult for me to say on a quarter by quarter basis what will be the growth, but our aspirations are to be north of uh, to be around 25%. And one uh, last just, one, or uh, just add that, you see, we are we are uh, working towards a situation where uh, the geographical expanse of the state, especially in the far flung areas of North Bengal, are adequately catered to through our route to market because in the value segment, efficiency of service also is equally important, and and uh, the the Greater Calcutta point that I alluded to in service is Univer brands. For the current value segment, we are in areas beyond Greater Calcutta, though we are not present in the whole of this I Just wanted to bring it out on the table for clarification. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the understanding. Uh, one last one on the margin. So first half, uh, the EBITDA margin uh, stood at around 25%. We have been seeing uh, uh, the uh, uh, cost pressures, uh, you know, uh, around. Uh, so, uh, should we expect some kind of dip in the margins in the second half, or uh, you will be comfortable enough with 25% uh, kind of margins in the uh, second half as well? Um, you know, I've always maintained that, uh, uh, so, you know, commodity prices go up and down. Uh, to some extent, we have the ability to pass it through. Some parts of our business, we don't have that ability. But uh, again, as a principle, I have maintained that Q4 uh, uh, margins, Q4 of last year, uh, those margins, I believe, are sustainable into the medium term. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there may be uh, uh, ups and downs uh, quarter by quarter, but Q4 is something that uh, I believe will sustain for medium term. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the understanding and all the best for your future work. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Anshul Vardhya from Edelweiss Wealth Research. Please go ahead. Thank you. And thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Congratulations on the good set of numbers. I have a couple of questions. First, on the gross margin. So I, we see that the gross margins we have been able to maintain on quarter on quarter basis, despite we have see, uh, seeing the high prices of the rice as well as the DDGS relation coming down and Bihar plant was not operational. So could you throw some light there? Is it that, that it is real? It is the realization dri driven gross margin maintenance. And second thing. So in that case, your prices would be maintained mostly for the consumer segment. So how does, uh, how shall we, it is a fair expectation to expect margin accretion going forward in the second half. Uh, so inflation pressures are all around uh, uh, with, uh, with fuel inflation obviously driving uh, a lot of inflation pressures across commodity, uh, across different commodities. Uh, you know, uh, most of Q2, uh, uh, margins and realizations were stable, uh, but towards the end of Q2, we started seeing uh, uh, inflation coming in. Uh, we are seeing inflation continue past Q2 into Q3 as well. And uh, uh, to the extent possible, we are passing on 
uh, uh, the impact of that. Uh, like I said earlier, um, you know, regardless of inflation or deflation, uh, our Q4 margins, I believe, are sustainable. Um, any increases beyond that uh, are uh, due to commodity fluctuations, uh, but certainly Q4 margins are sustainable. Yeah, that was helpful. So a couple of questions on the bookkeeping side. One is that uh, we are seeing that the other expenses have increased substantially in this quarter. So can, could you please comment on that? And second, the, earlier it was notified that the claim would be there for the Bihar loss, loss production. So have you already accounted this in the QT or this, this will be accounted in upcoming quarters? Yeah, Dr. Roy, uh, Nilanjan, could one of you please take that? Uh, Dr. Roy, we are unable to hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? I'm Nilanjan speaking. Yes, yes go ahead, Nilanjan. Uh, uh, on the other expenses, a major portion of the other expenses including include indirect manufacturing expenses, which includes uh, repairs and maintenance on buildings and power and fuel. Our power and fuel has slightly increased, and that has been into our budgeted norms only. It's on account of our planned maintenance in Samarka that we had done. And obviously in North, because, because of the humid climate in quarter two, the cooling, the, the, there is a higher usage of cooling, cooling tower in Bero. And then as a result of which our power and fuel expenses have gone up. On repairs and maintenance, as I mentioned, that we had a planned maintenance in the later stages of Q1, which, gets, which got spilled over to Q2, resulting in a higher expenses of repairs and maintenance. Having said that, these are all a part of our budgets, and uh, this is not something extraordinary, and we are within our norms. Thank you, sir. And sir, anything on the Bihar loss production claim from the insurance? Is it already uh, Loss of profit, uh, there, is, there isn't a, a policy for loss of profit uh, that's in place. Uh, uh, loss on assets uh, and repairs that would be required due to floods, uh, that is insured. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, loss of profit is, uh, is an opportunity loss that has happened in this quarter. Thank you, sir. So last one on the broadly, like people are seeing the increased penetration of your medium liquor as a new optionality coming in West Bengal and Haryana. So can you give some thoughts on the traction of our medium liquor volume in this state? That would be helpful. Uh, yeah, Param. <laughs> Yeah, so so you know, um, West Bengal obviously you you know the value segment and the value plus segment, you know both are behaving in a different way. The value segment is static right now more or less, and the value plus segment, which is very nascent, is starting to accelerate. And as of now, this segment is uh, very very small. It's only about uh, two or uh, two percent and a bit over it. But we are expecting that with evolving consumer preferences and the quality of offerings that are uh, entering this segment, this can go sky high. And, uh, you know, my guess is as good as anybody else's, but uh, we definitely expect it to start moving into a double-digit uh, zone of the total value segment sooner than later. And uh, we expect to play a strong role in it and are preparing ourselves for both purposes. It's, it's accretive, and it also gives the consumer a lot more satisfaction that he has got a better offering. So I'd like to add to that, please. Uh, so, you know, just as in Rajasthan, we saw this. Uh, in Rajasthan, has really been the flag bearer for this category, um, and, and, and most states are following that model. Um, and, and just like in Rajasthan, it took them, uh, uh, you know, I, well over 12 months to start prioritizing uh, this as a uh, uh, as as a serious category, you know, uh, what is the correct price point for it? Where should it be sold? Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, with states, and because Rajasthan was really the first state, they 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 probably made more mistakes than other people would, uh, because now uh, a successful model is in place. Uh, so you know, it's a it's a slow. It's a, it's a start. We have seen this in Haryana and in West Bengal that these are starts right now. And uh, just like in Rajasthan, where 
this becomes a very large uh, uh, business uh, that that uh, comes right in the middle of, in terms of price point, of country liquor, as well as the starting uh, range of IMFL, and becomes a very serious volume segment. We believe it will become that in Haryana and in West Bengal, but it will take um, uh, it'll take a few quarters for that to play out. And, and uh, to, to supplement it, uh, what Shekhar has said, it is key to be an early participant in that because we can fuel the growth of this segment as well. We can participate in the growth and uh, you know make sure that we are able to accelerate growth in a meaningful and a faster way and in the process also carve out a, a good share for ourselves. Thank you, sir. So last one, if I could squeeze. Uh, uh, Mr. Vardhya, I'm sorry. Yeah, I will come back in the queue. Sure. I will come back in the queue. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, before we move to the next question, we will request participants to limit their questions to two during the initial round. We will take the next question from the line of Pratesh Chera from Lucky Investments. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, I have a question on this value segment, uh, you know, which is defined as I think IMIL, right, uh, uh, or a new created segment in Rajasthan. Uh, this 500 rupee plus case segment, does it land up eventually canalizing the IMFL, uh, which is the popular segment of IMFL, which is let's like, say 900 rupee or you know 800 900 rupee a case? And how do you see this whole market then eventually evolving? So, so yeah, he, uh, yeah thanks, Shekhar. So here is my take on it, sir. Uh, so the consumer fluctuates and moves between price points within his comfort zone. And it is always a, 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 a tight race between players in different price points as to who is balancing out and giving a better offering uh, to the consumer, all in terms of quality, packaging, as well as price. So if we continue to be tilting the scale on the winning side on this, then we will we are confident that we will keep on bringing in consumers uh, one from upgrades of the value segment below it and second is we are hoping that a portion of consumers from the segment above it will start seeing a lot more meaningful opportunity to find uh, brands and liquids which are a very strong offering at a softer price point so it's a evolving thing very dynamic but yes if we continue to give strong delivery, like in any consumer business, we also expect consumers from one level below and one level above to enter into our price band. Uh, just for a clarification, uh, first of all, you mentioned that Rajasthan already has reached 40% as value share plus contribution, right? In the in that particular IML, is that you mentioned? No, our, our market share is uh, more than 40%. Uh, of the total segment, it would be a little less than that, probably. But but uh, but very strongly. No, that what is the number, Shekhar? Uh, sir, you, there were so many numbers mentioned. So I'm just yeah. clarifying that like the value no, plus just, segment. Yeah, so, so the yeah, it should be in the range uh, of 40. Shekhar is right. It is in the range of around 40. Shekhar the value right. plus. The value plus, yeah. Yeah, 30, okay. yeah 35 to 40 percent. 35 to 40, the range is correct. And okay. our market now, share is uh, north of 40. Okay. Uh, so this 3 million case, or let's say you did about, let's say, uh, I think you did about 10 million cases last year, right? In consumer? Yeah. Yeah, uh, in Rajasthan? No, no, total is for us. Total was more than that. Yeah, could you uh, could you please tell in total we can we can answer the question? Yeah, in the range of a little above ten probably. A little above ten. So at what pace do you think uh, some total of these regions that you operate, uh, which is Rajasthan, Bengal, Haryana, Odisha, uh, mm, uh, this 10 million cases uh, and uh, with the spec change now in Bengal, you said, right? So Rajasthan and Bengal are the two places where the spec change has happened, right? Uh, it's not happened in 
uh, in Haryana or Odisha as of now. Am I right on that? And if I'm not right, you may rectify it. Uh, and this 10 million cases, at what pace do you see it expand growing over the next uh, two, three years? You want me to take it, Shekhar? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. So, so uh, the the value plus segment is also entered Haryana. So, so it is across all three states. West Bengal actually is the latest entrant. So, okay. Haryana led it a little earlier than West Bengal. So, as of now, it seems to be the one by one state journey where uh, it, it seems to be expanding. And we are quite hopeful that this will this trend will continue even in some other states. In in terms of growth ambitions, you know, we are we are obviously uh, expecting strong uh, volume growth of double digit across, and the focus is as much as on volume growth as on trying to find accretive growth. So you know, uh, it is always a fine balance for us. It will be difficult to pack down number that when do we see the 10 million becoming 15 or even further. Uh, but suffice to say that, you know, we are tracking opportunities. We are sometimes even influencing opportunities. And at the back of our mind, there is always a balance between let's get volume and let's keep looking for accretive margins. Uh, so you you have to understand the vision and all excise policies are year on year. So, you know, you have to be very nimble footed rather than just keep taking long term projections because, uh, you know, opportunities keep coming. It's about uh, finding them quickly and uh, trying to be, if not the first mover, among the first couple of movers there. Just two additional questions. Uh, on the margin yeah. side. Uh, I'm sorry. Now, let... uh, you'll have to come back in the queue, sir. We have participants reading. Okay. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Hal Sheth from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and the congrats on good set of numbers. Uh, so just uh, a basic question to begin with. Uh, so is, is the value of the segment uh, the same as medium liquor? I mean, have we rebranded this? And you know, despite uh, further categorization into whiskey, rum, etc., the duty structure here would be similar as it was earlier, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the uh, you know there are three segments. There is country liquor or IMIL, which which we are now calling value. There is value plus, which is medium uh, liquor, uh, and there is IMSL, uh, which is the premium liquor, and the brands of Unibev, which we inherit. And just to add on to that, is the offerings of medium liquor a few years back and the offering of value plus segment, there is a there is also a distinct difference in the quality and variety of offerings. So so while as a principle at that point of time also something called medium liquor sat between the the lower end of the value segment and the IMFL, today also it sits in between. But uh, uh, referring to our earlier uh, discussions, it is it is about how you add value to the offering and make it enriched and uh, respectable and desirable to the consumer. So that's why we are treating with it with this term. Uh, understood, sir. And you mentioned that you know the market development for our country portfolio will precede the commercialization of capacities in Jharkhand. So have we, have we launched any products here and you know any efforts undertaken here um, that you would like to highlight and since you are expecting commercial? So construction is on uh, in Jharkhand of our bottling capacities as well as our distillation capacities. So uh, no business as yet. Uh, understood. And sir, uh, you know, so Ken, when you said there was some recent stake sale by promoters, so if you could throw some light on that, is it uh, kind of internal restructuring or are there any plans to... No, uh, so the details of this are, were, uh, uh, were disclosed to the exchanges and uh, you'll find all the explanation there, but uh, very quickly, uh, 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 one, promoter, one uh, company, one entity which is listed as a promoter uh, entity uh, their uh, shares were sold by IARC, uh, so that's the only thing, but uh, it doesn't impact the company in any way. I'm not sure. I'll just join back in the queue for the follow-up. Thank you. 
Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Darshit Shah from Nirvana Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for taking the questions and congratulations for the good set of numbers. Uh, so, uh, I understand we were uh, doing geographical expansion in Jharkhand as well as now in Orissa, and we were about to finalize third state as well. So, is anything there on the roadmap for that? Uh, yeah, there are plans uh, uh, that are in place. There are a couple of opportunities we're working on. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I do not have, a, have any information to offer uh, at this stage on the third opportunity. Okay. And sir, continuing on that, uh, I mean, just uh, we are reviewing on the risk front, like we saw in a lot of southern states where country liquor is banned. Uh, do you kind of foresee such situations happening in any of the states which we are present? So, uh, so you know, that's one of the reasons for reclassifying how we uh, look at these or uh, what we call these segments. Uh, you have to understand that uh, by uh, if a state stops calling, uh, uh, it stops uh, 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 or rather bans marketing of a certain nomenclature of product, it doesn't mean that they have banned consumption. Uh, uh, so consumption merely shifts to another product category, which is available either at the same price point or perhaps a slightly more premium price point. So these categories are not to be seen as sort of heterogeneous categories or categories which operate in silos, um, uh, uh, you know, just like perhaps tea has different price points but just because you are in a particular price point that's discontinued, that doesn't mean you stop consuming tea. Um, uh, 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 so similar to that, one must look at alcohol. Uh, so, you know, if a certain category is banned or becomes uneconomical for some reason, uh, it does not mean that we won't participate or we will lose our consumers. Okay. So what do you mean to say is that probably if something like this has happened in South, so uh, the a category has been uh, probably banned, but then there is a different kind of uh, product and category has come up for a similar kind of country liquor segment. That's what, uh, is, is that the understanding? Yes, for, for the consumer who wants to pay a certain amount of money, who has a certain budget, there is a category for them. And they removed the category that was called something and they created a new category, which was called something else. So the entire consumption shifted to that category. Okay. So essentially it's that uh, uh, kind of uh, rebranding or whatever you say, but the price point uh, yeah, is yeah. Like it eventually remains the same for the consumer. Net net consumption, uh, you can't yeah. uh, ban consumption. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. And sir, any uh, uh, thoughts on the recent uh, ethanol price increase by the government and would it be helpful for us? Uh, so the uh, OMCs, uh, the, 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 the government has announced a price increase for molasses-based ethanol. Uh, Grain-based ethanol price increase has not yet been announced, which is to be announced by the oil companies. And we are expecting that to come in, in, in the next um, uh, uh, yeah, few days. Uh, regardless of what that increase is, um, uh, you know, even if there is no increase, the uh, the margin levels that we are anticipating will continue. If there is an increase, it will only be margin accretive. Got it. Great, sir. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Participants, a reminder, we would request you to limit your questions to two during the initial round. We will take the next question from the line of Nitin Avasti from Incred Equities. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, my first question would be, why has the pricing been given to the OMCs for grain-based ethanol rather? And why is the government not announcing it? And why is it handed over to the OMCs to, you know, decide? And will, will it be all the OMCs come together and then decide on a price? Or uh, individual OMCs, as they wish, as per state, will decide the price? Well, that's a question that you'll have to ask uh... Uh, uh, the Prime Minister's office. Unfortunately, I do not have complete clarity on that either. Uh, but this is the way it has been for the last three years since grain ethanol uh, has been uh, uh, procured by the OMCs. 
okay okay ma'am uh, so the second question would be uh, as a company you have been very strong on the imfl side i am il side sorry i am il side and now you are very strongly positioning yourself for the imfl journey uh, the ena journey there is no question about it my question now pertains to the ethanol segment given that we are such a strong balance sheet and we are like the four runners in this industry and you have the technology know how the geographical expansion that nobody has in the country specifically in grain uh, why aren't we taking the subsidized loans for the ethanol plant and setting up ethanol plants all over uh so the two questions from what i understand one is uh, uh regarding our borrowing rates for setting up capacities and the other is why aren't we setting up more um uh, am i right those are the two questions yes okay so to answer the first question uh yes we uh, we are availing subsidized uh, uh loans for our capacities uh to the extent that we would like to uh take debt uh we are also working on reducing our debt as of now our long term debt is about 120 crores uh of which around 70 crores is uh is the subsidized uh, uh debt and 50 crores is uh the non subsidized debt um the the 50 crores which is non subsidized uh, over the next few months will get replaced by debt which is subsidized so the entire uh long term borrowings will be at subsidized interest rates uh with regard to why we aren't setting up more capacities well uh we believe that we must have a a balanced approach to growth uh between consumer as well as manufacturing we are growing uh, setting up ethanol capacities in states where we believe for for a long uh, t- in the long term will remain deficit in ena and in ethanol um there are there are a lot of new capacities that are going to come up for EA, for 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 ethanol and there will be most states in india will become oversupply states we want to remain in the states that will remain deficit states for the longest period of time whilst doing so investing in consumer businesses in that state that is our business model um uh, it is not our business model to go all over the country and set up uh, uh, ethanol capacities in every state or in two or three states that we are present in to set up very very large ethanol capacities because then essentially you remain um, you know a, a company that's converting from one commodity to another commodity ethanol for global spirits is to be seen as uh, an avenue which gives us an option of uh, of either to sell extra neutral alcohol or ethanol during the time we are investing in our capacities just like we have done in rajasthan where about 80 to 85% of our capacity is used for internal consumption we would like to get to that kind of levels at all our facilities no teacher uh, lastly on north east okay you'll we'll have to come back in the queue definitely i'll do that thank you we have the next question from the line of shitaj saraf from tusk investments please go ahead hi uh, good afternoon congratulations on the results i have uh, one question on um, taxation as mr saroop mentioned uh, on a sequential basis uh, how does the 52.5 crores of uh, fact that we have in second quarter uh, compare on a normalized basis after taking into account the mat uh, mat credit impact if you could just show some light there uh yeah so nilanjan could you take that please can you repeat the question once again please? yeah so uh, in quarter 2 we have 52.5 uh, crores of pat uh, so in this right on a normalized basis if we if we remove the impact of mat so what would be the adjusted pat for us in in the quarter so you know our our cash payout uh, our tax uh, our cash rate for tax so the amount of tax we actually deposit is 18% of pbt 
Mm-hmm. Our effective tax rate, however, is 33%. So the balance amount is the max credit that is available for us to use. Okay. Okay. Now, it. okay. from yeah. 1st of April, mm-hmm. um, or rather up to 31st of March of this year, of this financial year, we would have exhausted all the MAT credit that is available to use. As a result, we will then opt out of the old tax regime and move into the new tax regime, under which income tax is to be deposited at about 25%. Okay. So okay. on a on a on a cash basis, our tax outlay will go up from eighteen to twenty five. Mm-hmm. But on a accounting basis, our tax rate will come down from thirty three to twenty five. As a result, our EPS will be positively impacted. Okay. Okay. Got it. And and secondly, interesting uh, point on the consumer business and and the move to focus. Uh, on the consumer business and brands, so is there any broad aspiration that's laid out for Globus in the next four or five years? Uh, what would be the size and the margin you see for Unibev or, or the overall consumer business for Globus? Is there any aspiration or yeah, any sort of broad, uh, not estimate, but any sort of guidance you can give there? Uh, it's difficult to give that guidance. Uh, we do have internal targets. It's very difficult to give that guidance. Uh, I do. I have stated uh, in calls, and so has Param, uh, that in each of our states, we'd like to be north of 25% uh, market share. Uh, in, in, in the premium categories, uh, so that is a little more challenging. In the, in the value, value plus categories, uh, that's something that uh, we are more confident on. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a little difficult for me to give you that number, but suffice it to say, we, we are not trying to create a niche uh, business. Uh, we, are, we are in this for uh, creating a, a meaningful business, uh, but uh, to, to, to walk that journey uh, without, uh, 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 or rather investing what is prudent uh, and not making uh, irresponsible investments. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Suhas Naik from Creda Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I want to know about the West Bengal market, the size of the market, and we say we have 2% market sales right now. So have we introduced all of our brands there, or we are in the process of introducing uh, all of our brands? In the value sure, Param, could you please take that? Yeah, so, the, so the West Bengal market plays in the zone of between uh, 27, 28 lakhs to 30 lakhs in general in these uh, segments. And uh, that's, no, uh, yeah. that's per month. That's 27. Yeah, that's that's per month. That's correct. Yeah, thanks, Shekhar. And no, as of now, all our uh, planned portfolio is not on the shelf uh, at the outlets. A uh, couple of them are going into uh, the market in this quarter, and then there is another lineup uh, planned for next year. So we are expecting uh, them to also uh, help us in the journey. And is the distribution also in place for us there? Entire, so, the entire state or it's selective right now? So, so distribution is leading uh, our penetration. So at any point of time, we have distribution footprint, which is almost one quarter leading. So which means that uh, as we want to, whatever we want to expand in the next three months, that distribution footprint is in place. As we enter uh, within this quarter, we will put the distribution mechanism in place for the next quarter because, you know, we, we hire uh, colleagues also prudently, but distribution leads our speed and uh, the route to market is created and then we start launching the brand. So, Distribution is always ahead of our plan so that uh, they are ready to receive the portfolio and the brands which are being planned in the offering. Oh, can I add one more? I just want to understand the, the premium liquor. Uh, are we investing enough in this segment right now? Because we saw the, I saw the revenue of one crore for the quarter. So are we, are we 
are we not going aggressive in this segment or what are the plans here actually in terms of size did did get uh, it was uh, did get your question to say it again please i i want to understand about the premium segment uh, yeah. after the merger uh, because we uh, it, it, the size is very small right now and uh, what uh, are we investing enough in this business for growth so, or we are going slow no, on got that it. got it so uh, thanks so premium segment as i had mentioned a couple of quarters ago you know post covid we have readjusted our uh, our site of uh, action in these segments and we have started uh, moving our focus to the geographies where we within our framework see ourselves as having a reasonable and a strong right to win mm-hmm. and uh, these these uh, states also contribute significantly in terms of salience to the segment if we compare them with all india position and we are very niche players we have tested our brands our brands have found acceptance and we are as we talk to you we are almost at the verge of diving into the sea at deep end of the pool so west bengal uh, followed by delhi uh, followed by haryana and up are all likely to happen and uh, you know as quarters progress we will be uh, getting more and more aggressive in these segments in these states now investments obviously are prudently balanced uh, investments are ready and waiting and uh, we intend spending money at the right time in the right geographies and uh, prudently of course so it's not as if we will be deprived of investments as we Traverse to accelerate this journey. Oh, like uh, are we also approved at the defence depots and all? Uh, with the defence, any of our brands are sold there? So as of now, it is not an area of priority because we are planning to play in the big uh, markets where our recoveries are also stronger. So at this point of time, it is not uh, on the uh, data point for us. a little later down the line surely it is something which will come through thank you thanks for that thank you we have the next question from the line of pankaj saraf from sure water please go ahead hi my first question is on the cost side in the last conference call uh, q1 you had mentioned that the principal raw material for the company is broken right um and we did not see any shortage of broken right in india and therefore when the question was asked from the cost inflation side you said you don't really expect much so my question is have you seen cost inflation on the broken rice side and is that indeed the principal uh well because i think you mentioned that there was some inflation in the cost side sometimes i don't understand where did that inflation yeah. come so, from yeah so so no i think there may be some uh, 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 miscommunication or misunderstanding there is obviously a seasonal uh, uh, factor that comes into cost for of agri of any agri commodity uh, q2 into q3 maybe half of q3 is the lean season for uh, for rice all over india uh, and every year we do see increases uh, in cost here um, uh, uh, there is no shortage of broken rice uh, uh, that we have not in in my memory ever lost production uh for considerable time period because of shortage of raw material um uh but but during the off season uh yes uh, there is uh, an increase in cost and and that's what we we've seen uh, in addition the fuel costs uh, inflation that uh, you know we've all been impacted with regardless of the industry we operate in uh also uh, impacts uh, price of any commodity so that has been um uh, sort of uh, an additional factor uh, to keep in mind for this period got it and second question is where on the on the income statement where can i see this uh, effect of the cost of inflation of input materials because when i look at your so it was very nominal last quarter uh, and raw material consumption uh, has also uh, been lower due to the closure in bihar uh so it will be very difficult in the results for you to pick this out uh uh, uh and largely because it was very nominal uh, in q2 uh 
so you know uh, it's not something which is affecting business it's it's normal inflation which is expected during this period right i mean Honestly, when I analyze income statement, I'm seeing the cost of materials still at 31, 32% or at the same level as the previous quarter. So I'm not able to to actually map out what that means, what the cost inflation means in terms of margin. So, um, you know, like I said, cost of material consumed is based on total consumption of material. The hire factory was closed for some time in the quarter. Uh, so the, the results will not reflect quarter on quarter position. Uh, happy to uh, uh, answer this uh, offline and give you the data you require to the extent we can. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Vivek Gautam from GS Investment. Please go ahead. So congratulations on consistently coming out with good set of numbers. <clears throat> uh, so my question is regarding uh, this there was a press item in Patrika and the local magazines of Rajasthan regarding the contractors going on strike because they were being forced to have 50% RML uh, quota along with the IML quota. So as far as IML was concerned, they were okay. But as far as this forced selling of RML quota was there, uh, Rajasthan made liquor. They were protesting against it. So is our company affected in any way or is it Rajasthan State Ganganagar Sugar Mill or what exactly is that nitty gritty? And because I think so some that quota was reduced to 35% also from 50%, if you can say something. Uh, uh, I'm not able to comment on this call regarding, uh, 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 you know, nuances of government policy which have not been implemented. Uh, we can talk about uh, the government policy that has been implemented and the performance of our products in that environment. Uh, your question relates to things that may or may not have happened, uh, but basis the policy that is in place, our performance uh, uh, in Rajasthan has been satisfactory. Yeah, it's fantastic. So 47% consumer business is really good achievement, sir. And the second thing is that there is a lot of changes happening in the excise policy in Delhi, I think so in Bengal also, uh, and Jharkhand Odisha also you're venturing into it. So all these states are a country into itself as far as the alcohol sale is concerned. So in Delhi, for example, we were earlier quite dominant and now I'm not, we are having a negligible presence. So uh, in IMIL and other segments, uh, how, how are we placed and what are our plan of actions are in all these four states? Sir? Um, there is a significant amount of information regarding our plans uh, that we have discussed uh, and also on our presentation that has been published to exchanges today. Um, uh, uh, may I request uh, in interest of time and uh, several other questions that are in the queue that uh, in case, uh, sir, you feel that the information is inadequate, you reach out to us and we will be happy to schedule a discussion on this. No, Delhi specifically, if you can say, because that has been the major change in the excise policy and attracting a lot of press attention. So what are the hopes we have for Delhi, sir? Uh, our hopes are uh, very high for Delhi. The policy implementation is obviously very key. Um, uh, we are at the cusp of change. It's uh, in Q2, there was a, a very limited uh, impact. Uh, Q3 is where change is taking place. So we'll have to wait and see how the change unfolds. But from a long-term point of view, uh, our hopes are very high uh, about Delhi. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Varun Seth, an investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on Varun's good set of numbers. So just a clarificatory question from the previous participant on the risk side, so assuming like there is a ban in out for the country liquor. What I understood, if similar ban is there in, say, Rajasthan, then only the nomenclature of the country liquor may change value segment or a value plus segment. And rest, the product, margin, etc. will continue as it is. Consumption will continue as it is. And as such, there won't be any impact uh, on the company like us. Is the understanding correct, sir? See, we are talking very hypothetical situation. So, uh, you know, a hypothetical situation is uh, uh, you know, has the weakness of 
uh, being based on the assumptions that come to mind right now. Uh, uh, but let's say let's say that this hypothetical situation was to come true. Uh, the point I made was consumption will not reduce. It will merely shift to another price point. And even from the government's point of view, uh, they would like to grow tax revenue. Uh, I do not see any reason uh, in the post-pandemic uh, or rather during pandemic era uh, why governments would like to reduce their revenue of tax. Um, so, so, you know, it may be nomenclature change uh, but they will continue to provide a product uh, to uh, uh, for every uh, for every wallet for every budget, uh, and and for that reason we will always participate in value value plus segments and uh, with a position of dominance and and as a position of a disruptor uh, in in the premium segments. Got it, got it. So you mean consumption will change to the price point? So. Uh, maybe IMIL might shift to a lower price point of IMFL, something like that, or IMIL continues I, in IMIL. So, so I don't that. know. I, I don't know. It's a very hypothetical situation in terms of volume. Yeah, today, what is happening in South? If you can give those, those idea, idea on because country liquor is not is banned there. So today, how does it operate in South? If you have any as idea far as that? I know, we don't operate in South India, so I don't have an understanding of the nuances of that market. But as far as I know. Uh, th there are cheap IMFL segments uh, which are at which are at subsidized duty rates, uh, so it effectively comes to the same thing as a, as a uh, as a country liquor, which is also a, subs a subsidized duty uh, price point. Sure, sir. And my second and the last question is on the uh, third state of expansion, which we are looking at, and what we understood was that during the third quarter time you will announce. So is that expansion still on drawing board and something can be expected by December? Or yeah, so Q yeah. No, no, it's very much uh, on the plans and we had asked for our time till Q3, so kindly do give us that time. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you and best of you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take the last two questions. The next question is from the line of Ville Rai, an investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. My first question is, how long will it take us to achieve maximum capacity utilization in the new West Bengal plant? Uh, 45 days. So the 100% utilization, will it be 100%? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, sir. And, and how variable are the margins in the manufacturing business? And are these current uh, realizations sustainable? As mentioned on this call earlier and the previous calls, Q4 margins uh, as a, a, a overall for the company is what we expect to that will sustain. Uh, I believe we are operating a little bit above that currently, uh, but it is my belief that Q4 margins will sustain. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Sai Narayan, an investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Shagar. Uh, congratulations on the good set of numbers. So, uh, so I joined the call late. So I just want to know, actually, um, the, regarding the geographical expansion. So one is the uh, uh, West Bengal plant, actually, which I understand will become completely operational uh, in the next 45 days. And Jharkhand, actually, I just want to know an uh, update on Jharkhand. And apart from Jharkhand and Bengal, is there any other uh, state or something we are planning to venture into? That's my first question. Um, thank you. Uh, all information regarding this is contained in our uh, quarterly investor presentation that was published today. Uh, please do have a look at it. In case there is any inadequacy that you find in information, we'll be happy to set up a call to discuss it further. So the last question, second and last question is, so I remember I used to attend this call, sir. So you were saying about uh, the pricing power which we got because of uh, ethanol blending. So does it still hold good, actually, the pricing power we have yes. in the bulk alcohol segment? Yes, no change from last quarter. So, thanks, sir. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I would like to hand the conference over to Mr. Shekhar Swaroop for closing comments. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking out the time to join us today. Uh, as mentioned, in case we missed out on questions or if our information is inadequate, 
please do reach out to us and we'll be happy to set up a call to address the queries. Uh, thank you again and wish you a good weekend. <clears throat> thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Globus Spirits Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.